Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 66 of the Ron and Brian podcast. I am Ron, as always, joined by the lyrical Jesse James, Brian. Brian, how are you today, my friend? You you think I'm the lyrical Jesse James? I mean, it's not just me saying it. People out there are saying it. See, I really thought I was more of the lyrical Jesse Jackson. That's that's that was that's always been the kind of thing I've been going for. You're you're more of an outlaw. That's how I've always uh, that's how I've always pictured you. It's how I always will picture you. I'll Not take in a it. bad way. No, I'll take it. I'll take right. it. Are we well ready done. to do, uh, are we ready to get into this thing we call a podcast? Let's do it. All right. Drink of the week. <laughs> Drink of the week. Sasha. Drink of the week. Drink of the week. So we couldn't uh, week. we couldn't agree on a drink of the week this week. So Brian, what uh, what did you bring? What did you bring to the party tonight? I did. Uh, I went to the tried and true. All right. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, I like I, I think about myself is that when. When 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 times are tough and and I I feel uncertain about what's going to happen and and where we're going to go, not just as a people, as a as a race, as a as a country, but just myself, um, I like to drink Jack and Cokes. Nice. So today I poured myself a glass, um, three quarters with ice cubes. I did a couple shots worth of Jack Daniels, filled to the top with some uh, Diet Coke because I am trying to keep this girlish figure. And uh, here we are. All right. So it's a double, really. It's a double Jack and Coke. Mm. Let's hope. Let's hope it's a triple. <laughs> so I wanted to see what was the most unusual thing I had in my liquor cabinet because I haven't really gone through it in a while. And okay. I almost pulled out the St. Germain, knowing that you're a big fan. But instead, I have a little rhubarb liqueur right here from whoa, Art, whoa, whoa, from Art whoa. in the Age down in Philadelphia. Did yes. you say a rhubarb liqueur? I said a rhubarb liqueur uh, made based off of the old uh, rhubarb tea uh, recipe, apparently, that was big in colonial Philadelphia. So this All is, right. they say it's rhubarb and other botanicals from North America that they make into a, a little liqueur here. So let me see and, how this goes down. And you're just, this is just, a, this is like, like a, a shot that you're just taking I'm just down. I'm going to do it as a shot. Technically, I guess it should be mixed with something, but I said, what the hell? Why don't we see how it tastes straight? So hold on one sec here. Hmm. It's unusual. It burns. Oh, it burns. It's well, most liqueurs, it's, liqueurs it's will proof. have that effect. 80 proof. So describe the uh, what, what sensations are lapping over your tongue right now. It's a very complex taste mixture. Uh, it's almost like, uh, like cough syrup. So um, right. I would like to say it's pleasant, but it's not. It clearly needs to be mixed with something. So <clears throat> I will uh, I will need to keep that in mind moving forward. Oh, it burns right. more. It burns more as oh. it sits in your mouth. Yeah. It's coming so, back. It's making, don't call I grabbed, it a comeback. I grabbed a beer to wash it down with. Hold on. What kind of beer are we going with? So this is from Westbrook Brewing in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Uh, this is their key lime pie ghosts. Now, may I ask you a question while you're taking a sip of that nice of cold beverage? Can. Of course. Now, I thought I saw you, and I'm not sure whether this was something you sent me or something you would put on the, you know, on the interwebs. But it looked as if you are part of some type of mail order beer club. Uh, I am actually. And I was wondering if you could give me some more details about it, because, and you can say whatever you want to say about me. You can attack my my character. You can uh, just you can literally just sh shred me if you want. I was slightly jealous. Okay, I understand. Now, my I felt view, like I was missing out on something. I I, I have I have told you about this service before and sent you a, a referral link, which clearly shut up. Uh, you you just ignore me. But it's a it's a service called Tavor T A V O U R. And so it's a, it's an app for your phone, and basically what they do is each month, um, or I mean not uh, every month they they basically ship once a month, and I think it's like it's a flat fee. It's like fourteen, fifteen dollars to ship however many beers you choose, but usually like once or twice a day, um, 
you'll get a notification from your app that they have certain beers available. It could be in cans, it could be in bottles, it could be the big bottles, but they work with breweries all around the country to get, you know, limited releases. And then, you know, you just, you pay for them as you order them. And then when your shipping date comes, they just send you uh, one big shipment of beer. All right. So hold on. Let me see if I get this straight. Okay. Throughout, so you have a ship date. We'll say the uh 15th of the month sure let's go with that so throughout so on the 15th whatever you have in your cart they ship out they say now right and you can delay it i mean they they let you delay it up to like three or four weeks if you want to add more stuff to it so they're good like that um or you ron, just you order whatever you want right ron we're, we're both functional alcoholics there's absolutely <laughs> no way that we're going to sit there and say no 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 please delay the delivery of the beer that i want but let me get this straight so what you're saying is that through, so on, starting on the 16th, you check the app, right. and they say, okay, here are the selections we have for today. Right, so well, they'll, they'll send you an app. Right. Okay, well, and you check off what you want, and they put it aside for you. Right. And they keep putting it aside as you say, I want this, I want this, I want that. So on the 15th of the month, they'll fill a box for you and ship it out to you. Correct. The, you will pay for the beers as you set them aside, um, and so it'll tell you... You know, so and even you know, if you happen to miss it or you don't go right in, they keep like a running tab of like 10 beers right on the app. And like so like what's what's today's beer, for example, today um, they're offering uh, fresh I I one I I P A one hop I I one hop mosaic from Hubbard Cave. Uh, it's an Imperial I I P A with 8.5 percent. It's a Chicago brewery. Um, and you can get two cans of that for twelve dollars. What else do we got here? We got a Fury Kolsch from Salt Fire Brewing, and that is oh, that's a five hundred milliliter bottle for six ninety nine. That's actually a pretty good price. So anyway, yeah. So you you select your beers. Uh, if you miss it, you can be waitlisted for a beer. But I can tell you that I've never received a, a waitlisted beer. But yeah, it's a pretty good uh, service. I went a little crazy this past shipment and ended up with like thirty cans of beer being delivered. Okay. So I have now downloaded the app. And by the way, I would like people to know this is not a paid advertisement. It is not. For the services of Tavor, T-A-V-O-U-R. In case you're listening, people at Tavor, hit us up. We are willing to hype your product again. Now, you can send me a promo code. I can, yes. So I will do that later on. Because one of the things, the complaint that I have about living in New York is that um, the bars have a great selection of craft beers. Okay, but the uh, but purchasing for home, there really doesn't seem. You've got to really search it out. Right. Um, your average supermarket does not have it. Uh, liquor stores are not allowed to sell beer. So you're. So I don't really have the availability where I'm living right now to access the type of craft beers that you have. Like one of the things that I look forward to the most when I go down to visit you is first off spending quality time with your wife. Of course. I mean, that's that's first and foremost. Secondly, are those moments when you and I walk down into your basement and raid your beer refrigerator. And I'll because put up, the, the beer fridge is looking pretty impressive, so I may have to put an updated photo of that online. But the thing is, is the fact that it's literally filled with beers that I have never seen, never heard of, would never come across. Life is too short to drink boring beer. Understood. Understood. And um, so if you can do me a favor, send me your promo code. I assume it gets you some kind of uh, uh, freebie gift discount. I get, a, I get a $10 credit if anyone uses referral code 265020. Just putting that out there. Should I write that down or are I'll, you going to tell me that again also, later? Because I know, you know, short term memory with you is pretty much shot. So. Ooh, touche, Ronald. Oh, touche, Ronald. To that kind of hurts. To hurt. be honest, I'm not okay. 100% that I should be drinking because I'm on steroids. So. Are you on steroids? I am on steroids, yes. Now, may I take a guess as to the reason why? I, if you can guess, I would be very impressed. All right. Now, we all know that you've, you've harbored dreams of becoming a Major League Baseball player. Uh huh. And you just have never really been able to sign a pro contract. No now, athletic you know, ability whatsoever. 
that the Philadelphia Phillies have not had the season this year that they were expecting. So they in first place in the wild card, but disappointing every, nonetheless. Everybody thought Bryce Harper was going to put them into first place. Not happening. Uh, has not happened, which means, at least as far as the way I see it is, this is your attempt to um, to to finally hit your major league uh, uh, baseball career. I wish it were that exciting, but no. Um, Can I, thing, do one... I get do I get a second? <laughs> do I get Please. a second? Why not? Okay, you have a weird rash in the uh, skin area between your 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 balls and your upper thigh. It hasn't gotten there yet, but it okay. is rash related. In my later years, I find that I've become uh, extremely allergic to poison ivy and apparently got into some uh, when I was working in the yard this weekend. And mm -hmm. uh, I know the, the folks at home can't see this. But let me hold this arm up to Ooh. the uh, camera there so you can look at that. Whoa. And let me hold that arm up there so you can look at that. And if I could Ron put, old. if I was limber enough to put my leg up over my head, you could see that. And I'm well I'm working back in on college, that for you, you my friend. Back in the college, you used to be able to do that. <laughs> I mean, let's just call it like it is. But my uh, my right leg uh, looks even worse than that. And initially, they gave me a steroid cream, which didn't do anything. So I started on uh, the oral steroids today, and I am fucking shot out of a cannon. Like really? really, yeah. I mean, I've had to do this before. This isn't the first time. And like the, they, you really got to put down like the highest amount of steroids for the first four days. And I'm like, I'm only taking like sixty milligrams. I can't right. imagine how these guys that do the anabolic steroids do it because like I, uh, my, I'm sweating. My, yes. I'm, I, and when I tell you like I, am usually not this awake during the podcast, but I am like, okay. I'm fucking laser focused right now. I may have a heart attack during this. All I'm asking is just call nine one one if you see me go down. If anything happens, can I can I get the beer fridge? Uh, I will bequeath the beer fridge to you without right, question. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, well, then I, I hope you feel better. And if it makes you feel better, you're not alone in this because I'm currently on eye steroids. Nice. You did I have the my, second eye operated on this week, I correct? I did have the second eye operated this past uh, Tuesday. So I'm doing eye drops now on the left eye. And uh, one of the uh, the things that I most feared about eye surgery came true Tuesday morning. Which was? I came to in the middle of the surgery oh. and became aware of what they were doing. Oh, wow. How, so how do you handle the first, that? The first, I, uh, f I, mild panic was the word that, uh, <laughs> so... What happens is uh, they they don't they can't legally say that they knock you out for it. Okay. But what they do is they give you just enough propofol that you're out like a light. That's that Michael Jackson or, stuff. Well, let me rephrase it. I don't know physically what my state of being is during the surgery. But what happens is is that I have no memory of what happens. Okay. So the first two times I had the eye surgery. I go into the, the surgery room. They've already prepped me for the IV. They put the, um, uh, they put the drug into the IV. They say, you're going to feel a little calm. Um, next thing I know, the surgery is over. Literally, it's, it's, it's time travel. This time, um, I'm speaking to the anesthesiologist prior to the surgery, and he goes, um, you know, we're going to give you a little bit less than we did last time mm. because last surgery you were moving your head a lot and it was a problem. So we're going to give you a little bit less. I guess, the you know, the more they give you, maybe the more, you know, comfortable I get. And that's when the night terrors really kick in. <laughs> so so he says, we're going to give you a little bit less. And I said, all right, well, you know, you've done me well the last two times. So I trust you. So this time... And what they do is they literally, they, they, they put like a, a strap across your forehead. So you cannot, you, there's no way you're moving your head. Um, next thing I know, the, um, I see this, my, my field of vision is covered. It is literally just nothing but a bright light. Like, I, you know, when they say like, go to the light, Carol Ann, yeah, yeah. go to the light, Carol Ann. All I see is a light. Like there's no like, like tunnel. It's literally just a wall of, of bright light. I can't see anything, but I hear the surgeon talking and i hear the anesthesiologist rep responding to him and now i now is when my moment of panic kicks in oh yeah i, and would, I would freak out at that point 
I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something along the lines of, I'm aware of what's going on right now. <laughs> and I could hear the surgeon say something uh, uh, similar to, this should be over in a couple minutes, so if you just if you can bear it, we'll be all right. At which point I said, I don't want to be awake for this, so please give me something more because I don't want to be awake for this. And the anesthesiologist, I remember him saying, are you sure? And I said, yes, I am positive. And the next thing I knew, I was uh, sitting in the chair in recovery. I mean, I suppose it's a tad bit better than coming to and realizing your pants were off. I would trade coming to and my pants being off for having eye surgery on any day. However, and I really want to thank everybody for the well wishes. I mean, my social media was lit up. It was blowing up, no question. Um, You know, people from across the globe were reaching out to me because they knew I was going under the knife. Um, Really want to thank our friends in in Australia, Nigeria, um, our listeners in Spain that reached out to me. Uh, Really meant a lot. All right. Uh, So... uh, well, you've so got a full uh, medical update now on both Ron and Brian. So maybe that could be a new bit. <laughs> Possibly. What's ailing What's, us this week? I love it. I All love right. it. Let's keep it moving. This week in racism. 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 So Nancy Goodman got her second win this week, although it was a lot closer than I think anybody was anticipating. She knocked off Samantha Grace Vaughn 60% to 40%, uh, a close contest, especially considering we did not have any audio for Samantha, and those candidates tend to, to do poorly. But um, it, was, it was neck and neck uh, up until the last minute. Brian, your thoughts on this contest? I'm going to say this. One of the things that I have come to really appreciate about our This Week in Racism is just how strong the female candidates have have shown themselves. Um, And I think it's it's part, I don't know whether it's a result of the Me Too movement where women are just not taking a, uh, you know, a backseat anymore. Uh, I look back on 2018 and I feel very strongly, I mean, Dale Robertson's uh, I mean, uh, if I could just, I, I could go on. It Jimmy was really Taylor. Ama- I mean, it was it was a very male dominated field last year. Who was the um, Who was the guy who wanted who was pro incest? Um, oh, uh, Nathan, Nathan something or other. I want to say Nathan Fielder, but I don't think so. Um, anyway, not to, not to belabor a point. 2019, the year of the white women racist. And last year, I mean, we had Barbecue Betty. We had Elevator Eleanor. I mean, we had Kermit all Patty. the... I mean, there was there, there were women in the contest, but no one is strong, strong as the candidates we've had so far this year. The la- I would say the, the last couple of months has women uh, unabashedly are... Um, have really, t- you know, stepped up their game. I can't remember the last really good male uh, racist of the week we've had. And well, we've had some. Just we've had some wait. Good... Oh boy. <laughs> let's see oh who we. Boy. Let's see who we looked at this week. Uh, over right. in Langhorn, Pennsylvania, in my neck of the woods, uh, Zafaria Moore was at Sesame Place with her family when an older white woman started to swear at some kids in line at one of the rides. When Moore asked the woman to watch her language, she told Moore to, quote, go back to where you came from. Moore was dressed in Muslim garb while at the park and felt the woman's comments were racist. The woman was ejected from the park and Sesame Place has banned her for life. Just a re- quick wait, wait, aside, wait. are you familiar with Sesame Place? I've been to Sesame Place. Really? It really is a place. Yeah, I, one year I did a summer camp and okay. uh, they took us there. It is for an adult without children. It is hell on earth, without question. Why would an adult go there? I mean, it's um, almost like it's it, I, it's similar. It's I would have to question, and this is where I think I'm going to ask you: What is worse, an adult male that goes to Disney World without children, or an adult that goes to Sesame Place without children? Oh, hands down, an adult that goes to Sesame Place. But I had a, right. I had a business reason to be there. The hotels that I worked for uh, partnered with Sesame Place with o- overnight packages and things like that. Okay, so it was all business related. But yeah, there's not a lot of adult rides there. At least at Disneyland, you can argue there's adult rides. There's the Star Wars stuff now and all that. But regardless, um, 
We're going to go out to Montgomery, Illinois, near Chicago, where Ryan Salzman, 36 years old, has been charged with a felony hate crime for firing an air rifle out of his bedroom window at an African-American man and Hispanic woman who were standing in their driveway talking. Witnesses said Salzman also yelled racial slurs at the couple. Salzman was already being held at the Kane County Jail when he was served with the felony crime warrant earlier this Mm. week. So a fine, upstanding citizen to begin with. In our nation's capital, a U.S. State Department official has been outed as a white nationalist leader who spread Nazi propaganda and attended the violent rally in Charlottesville. Matthew Gebert allegedly used the alias Coach Finstock online and in private correspondence with other white nationalists, while his wife, Anna Vukovic, has been accused of blogging under the pseudonym Woofy James, also in support (laughs) of the white nationalist movement. Vukovic has denied the claims, while Gebert refuses to comment while he is being investigated. Did you say Woofy James? Woofy James, yes. Oh, that's a great one. That's a great Coach one. Finstock and Woofy Gay Woofy James. All right. All righty. Uh, going down to Texas, a fan attending a Texas Rangers game posted on Facebook about another fan in the stands who verbally abused her and her family because they are Hispanic. The man allegedly complained about illegal aliens surrounding him at the game and referred to her son as Speedy Gonzalez. The Rangers are investigating the claim and have asked for the public's help in identifying the fan in question. Uh, But our contender, and I know you've been asking for a male contender, we have one this week going to Columbia, South Carolina. 16-year-old Cardinal Newman High School student Parker Mustaine was arrested last month after a pair of racist PSAs he filmed were passed around his school. Uh, We've got one of them right here. Howdy, I'm Parker Mush, and I hate black people. They're the worst. They're stinky, and they just suck. They're just bad people. If you notice over there is a box of Jordans, the favorite pair of shoes for a black man. I'm going to show you what I think of a black man. Fuck all niggers. Mm. So he followed that one up with this. Hey. It's me again, Parker Mushin, hater of all black men. Look over here. It seems that our nigger hasn't quite learned his lesson yet. It seems like he needs 25 rounds to the dome. I don't think that was enough. Thank you very much for watching my PSA. Fuck all niggers. So uh, that uh, parents must be proud. Awfully proud. Um, he, the worst thing is his parents probably are proud. No, that's true. Uh, he is also further alleged to have threatened to shoot up his school after he was forced to withdraw when the videos came to light. Uh, Mushton is the grandson of Richard Quinn, the prominent South Carolina political strategist who was arrested last year for trying to derail a multi-year corruption probe into his activities. So coming mm. from really good stock there. So uh, we've got... We've got racism and violence in one candidate. So will that be enough for Parker Mushkin to take down Nancy Goodman, who's looking for her third win? Time will tell. Actually, you listeners will tell. Go to the Facebook page, go to the Twitter page, and vote in This Week in Racism. Brian, I'm going to put you on the spot because I feel this may be one of the tightest contests of the year. Who do you think comes out on top? Um, oof, really? Wow, I was not expecting this. I'm going to have to go with Parker. I got to agree. Uh, and I'm going wins. and I'm going to tell you, first off, once again, unabashed racism. True. Really, you know, um, second of all is the um, misguided use of the fact that he thinks he's doing PSAs. So he's filming videos for um, social media content rather than having a moment of outrage where he lets loose how he really feels. These are premeditated, um, planned speeches that he's giving. Also, in light of everything that's gone on in America over the past week, um, the fact that he's combining racism with 
um, guns, I think, is what's going to set him over the top. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, uh, Nancy, you know, probably gets angry a lot and drops the N word a lot. But, you know, Parker had to go buy a pair of Jordans, had to throw them in the back of his pickup truck, had to throw his guns in the back of his pickup truck, had to drive out into the middle of nowhere. Like, there was a lot of thought. Like, it wasn't kind of like you, you just said. Like, Nancy got angry, said what was on her mind. This kid clearly put some intense thought into what he was mm-hmm. doing here. All right. Yeah, it's I, I got to go. Uh, that's that's my prediction. But uh, you decide, you listeners. Right. Uh, go to our Facebook page. Uh, there's going to be a poll up uh, tomorrow morning, the day after we record this, and uh, you guys are going to going to let us know who is. The better racist. Is it Nancy Goodman? Is it Parker the PSA? I don't know. It's not up to me to decide. Right. Vote or die, people. Vote or die. Ron and Brian's Beef of the Week. Can I just say real quick? I'm fucking killing it keeping this podcast just moving along. This is what steroids do, Brian. This is what HGH does to you. It ramps you up and it gets you through your fucking day. I need it more also, steroids. It also helps the um, the fast twitch muscles. So, you know, as soon as the racist of the week bit was dying down, you immediately went right into beef of the week. My brain is working on a level that it never has before. Are my testicles the size of raisins? Sure. These things happen, though. What's more important is how fired up I am. You don't care. Yeah. You don't care about how small your testicles Listen, are right now. I'm married. I don't use them anymore. What does it matter? It's about the podcast. Exactly. Brian, what's your beef? It's uh, right now. It, I'm going to say that it is. Um, it's really sad. I wish I had a better one. Okay. I've, I actually had a pretty good week. It's the Wall Street subway station of on the Lexington Avenue line, which for some reason, uh, and I, I know I've complained about the MTA lately. Yes. Um, the sub, the entire subway station smells like vomit, and you can you 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 can see that they've cleaned it. But every morning I get off the subway and I uh, have to walk through that subway station to get to the exit. And it literally is, I am just smacked. And it's not its not urine. I can handle bum urine. Right. It's not feces. You're used to that. We've all, we've all smelled bum feces. But it's, the, it's a putrid vomit smell that uh, is uh, quite unpleasant. And you don't smell it in other subway stations. So it's particular to that one. MTA, get off your ass. Clean the subway station at Wall Street. I'm not going to lie. If I had been sedated for a surgical procedure and woke up during it, I probably would have made that my beef of the week. Not judging. Mm. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I, the, the only reason why it wasn't was because I, I, I felt no physical discomfort. All right. That's like fair. They, they, they literally numb the daylights out of your eyeball. Okay. Fair um, enough. So... Uh, uh, so literally, it literally was just the fact that it was in my field of vision. Okay. Uh, my beef this week is... What's cli- pissing you off? It's climate change. And oh. sure, I know we like to joke around a bit Fake. here at the Ron and Brian Fake. podcast, but we get uh, we get real sometimes. And uh, this week, climate change, because we had some very major storms tear through my area again last night. You know, we've been in our current house for going on... Uh, probably three or four years now. I can tell you the rainstorms this year, worse that they have ever been. The flooding in our backyard, worse that it's ever been. But the bigger issue is we had so much water that it flooded out my basement, coming close to my Yankees memorabilia, but thankfully (gasps) not damaging it, but damaging a good amount of stuff. Like, I have never seen the amount... Like. I came onto my street and there was so much water pouring down the street that everybody's empty cans, garbage cans and recycling cans had all been swept down the entire block and were piled up in a neighbor's driveway. So tell me that's not climate change, Brian. Tell me the storms aren't getting worse around you also. Could it possibly be that you're and and this is and I'm not saying I know this for a fact, but I'm throwing it out there as a possibility. All right. Um 
because until you can prove something, then you have to you have to accept that there are other possibilities. <laughs> I would like to think, and it's a possibility, is that there it's it's over development of your municipality. Um, one of the things, uh, having visited your neighborhood, is that the infrastructure of that of that uh, uh, is not what I don't believe that it's it's. They've not upgraded it as they've put in all these multifamily homes, you know, not on the block you're living in, but the area. I don't believe that the drainage system is 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 made to to handle the amount of water that's coming in off of all these homes. Well, the apparently and the township is now looking into this. Part of the problem could also be uh, with a, uh, a a congregation that has a. Uh, a, their their grounds up on the hill behind our neighborhood that has apparently done some resurfacing and things like that. So they may be congregation Kola me might be the culprit. And I know it's very trendy to blame the Jews, but <laughs> we're gonna let the township play this one out and see what happens. So the township is saying that what they've done is they have um They've taken out the dirt covered in cement or or uh, pieces of house so that their land is not soaking up any water when it rains. It's possible because the house right behind us gets us even worse because they're the first house down the hill from the congregation. So they right. actually called the township because their entire driveway was probably about two feet deep in water. Mm. So Can we'll I see. make a suggestion? As always, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm open. What? Okay, now... Are, can you by yourself be able to tell who the members of the congregation are? So, or is it possible that they somehow can uh, mix in with the other residents of the neighborhood? Because one of the things that I was going to suggest is, first off, what you do is you um, politely ask them to wear yellow armbands. <laughs> okay. You politely ask them just this way. You you know exactly that they belong to this congregation then wait let let that go on for a little bit okay then what you do is you knock on their door one day you know um in the middle of the night maybe a, a crystal night what you do is you show up to their house um you politely uh, uh take them out of their home escort them into a van drive them to union station where you put them on a train so do I necessarily have to drive them to Union Station? Because that's in D.C. If I could take them to a train station here in Philadelphia, that would be a lot easier. If it, You know what? I personally, I like the idea of taking them down to D.C. All right. If you're going to go, if you're going to go the lazy route, take them to Philadelphia and put them on, you know, send them to camp. You know what I mean? Just say, listen, we don't want you in this neighborhood. We're going to send you to a camp. OK, it seems extreme at the moment. But I feel like after a few more days of steroids, I might be on board. So I will keep you updated also, as it goes along. With, with the way this current administration is going, is it really that far off from, from, from where we're headed? But I it mean, won't be the Jews. It won't be the Jews because we know that the religious right loves the Jews. Yes. They're fans. They don't. They don't well, they, they just want them in charge of Israel. They don't really like the Jews. <laughs> they just want to show that they have support. It will be other races that will be round up. Um that's that it's just something it's it, it'll take care of your water problem all right i will definitely keep maybe, that in mind maybe you'll have a solution all right i'll think about it maybe I'll, this I'll, could be i'll a, update you it's, this could be your first solution this could be a second solution <laughs> maybe i don't know this this could be a final solution for all i know i have no idea ron you're just I'm you're just spitballing right now i'm just trying to give you some options that's right. it uh, um well, unfortunately, Brian, a, a topic that we have covered many times has reared its ugly head again, uh, and that is mass shootings here in the United States. We had the, the shooting the other week at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, and then this week we had El Paso and, I believe, Toledo, if I remember I President Trump dating. telling me. I don't know. President oh, no. Trump said Toledo, so I'm pretty sure that's where it was. But Ohio is 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 Trump land. He knows that th those are his people. You would think he did. He did carry Ohio. Right. Um, and how'd that go? I mean, you know, I, I don't even know how to respond to these anymore. So clearly the uh, the El Paso shooter uh, was driven by 
hatred of minorities. You know, his manifesto pretty much stated that, that he was against the infestation of Hispanics, he called it, in Texas. So he drove, what, nine hours to, to El Paso mm-hmm. to go to a Walmart there. Uh, it was uh, a high percentage of Hispanics living in that community. It also was a Walmart where uh, Mexicans uh, visiting the U.S. would come across the border to do shopping. So he knew right. he was going to be able to go there and and cause mass carnage for minorities. Uh, 22 people dead, I believe, is the count at this point. And growing. Uh, and growing. growing. I mean, there's 24 people that were injured, some severely. We, you know, we're still waiting to see if everyone's going to pull through. Um, and he was arrested. Uh, he he was not killed. He, he was not even beaten. He was taken into cuffs uh, peacefully, it seemed. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how that plays out. In the meantime, uh, you had the, the guy in Dayton, Ohio, who in in a very short period of time managed to kill nine people because the police were on him right away. The the entire incident lasted around one minute, but he had, and I don't know if you saw the the picture I shared in our Twitter page, but he had a, I don't even know what they call it, but it it held a hundred bullets that, uh, that hooked into his gun and he was just able to fire off. He killed his own sister uh, during his, his rampage, uh, there was some very chilling security video. I don't know if you saw the video from outside the restaurant where I, he ended up getting shot and killed. Yes. But what, I mean, you have to give a tremendous amount of credit to the police that night in stopping him so quickly. Because if you watch this video and you see the number of people that were in the restaurant and that ran into the restaurant off of the street for protection and they shot and killed him just as he was ready to go through the doors of that restaurant if he was able to get into that restaurant and start firing he would have the numbers would have been tremendous it was it's it's disgusting to see i mean i i i i don't even know what to say anymore and then you've got a president going to hospitals giving thumbs up pictures with the staff well, no, he, th- that was a pure photo op. Oh, yeah. I mean, you cannot you cannot in any way, shape, or form claim that it's not. But I don't think that... Well, he turned um, it into a campaign ad already. Oh, Jesus, what a scumbag. Um, my question, what I found interesting about the two shootings that took place this week is the fact that it really, first off, obviously, the white male problem is, 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 a, is a recurring theme. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thread um, that runs throughout it. Uh, second of all is, um, and this is the, the thing that bothers me the most about the, um, the, the, the gun problem or the mass shootings we have is that we are, um, we are selling weapons of mass destruction to average citizens and in, and, and, and we're, we're making no effort to tighten up those laws. You know, we ha- we will not allow your average person to own a tank. We will not allow your average person to have grenade launchers or nuclear bombs, um, things that have the ability to kill a lot of people in a short period of time. But if you were to take these weapons and somehow turn them into something that you can call a gun, suddenly you have got Americans um, of, of, of different ethnicities of different economic backgrounds, literally clinging to these weapons, saying that because the Constitution says um, that they have the right to bear arms, it is absolutely the, the holiest of holy vows that this government has ever taken that you cannot ban or limit access to these weapons in any way. I mean, I... I, I I'm I'm not a bleeding heart liberal. I, I I'd like to think that I exist somewhere towards the middle. I don't I, I see nothing wrong with somebody owning a handgun. You know, if 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 you but those the they what are you looking at? A, a 12 gun a 12 bullet cartridge, 15 bullet cartridge. You're talking about an AK-47 which you can stroll into a gun store in any state um in the south where they have liberal gun laws. These things can roll off a hundred rounds in a minute. The damage that a bullet from an AK rifle 
can do to a human body where the AR-15, literally one bullet can just shred the human body. The level of destruction that one of these bullets going through a human body can do, you are almost guaranteeing death. Whereas a handgun, yes, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it, you you can get killed by a handgun, but it limits the amount of damage that a human being can do. And, and you know, we, so the argument the argument of I'm sorry I'm no, I'm on a ahead, rant, but the argument that people have of guns don't kill people, people kill people. And if you were to ban the the, the handguns and take away all the guns, you're still going to have people murdered out there. Absolutely, but a human being with a with with a a, a knife can only take out so many people before somebody's going to be able to take them out. You walk around with an AR-15 in on your side with hundreds of rounds. In, it's, it's almost impossible to stop you. Well, and I, I have two things, if I can just jump in here. If you've ranted for a minute, I don't want to interrupt you again. But we used to have an assault weapons ban in this country. Um, you know, and it was it, it was actually a, the combined efforts of Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and Ronald Reagan that got this assault weapon ban implemented back in the in the eighties. So if you look at if you if you look at the fortieth if you look at the forty deadliest mass shootings since nineteen forty nine in this country, um, which a mass shooting in this case is is eight or more people being killed. In, mm-hmm. in the 10 years before the 1994 assault weapons ban was instituted, there were seven mass shootings like that. Mm-hmm. If you look at the 10 years that the assault weapons ban was in effect from 94 to 2004, there were two. If you look at the 15 years since Congress allowed that bill, that ban to expire in 2004, there has been 26. 13 yeah. of them in the last five years. Okay, remind me. So it was it was under George Bush that the ban went, um, that they that they, they let the- 94 would have been, uh, I mean, it might have been Clinton even. I think it did expire under Clinton. Why would Clinton let that expire? And, when, and more importantly, why isn't he taking more flack for it? It's a good question. What I don't get, and, and, and you kind of touched on it here, you know, everyone's argument is- you know, well, people can still kill people with a handgun. People can still kill people with the knives. But yes, I mean, we had a knife rampage just to, today or yesterday where multiple people were killed. But you don't end up with 22 people dead like you did in El Paso. You don't end mm-hmm. up with the number of people dead like you did in Las Vegas. And what I have a very hard time wrapping my brain around from these people that want to be able to have whatever gun they want, how many human lives are worth it? There's no, no, no. There's no number. Right. The the it, it is it is a it is a sacrosanct or whatever the word is. Um, it is like it is it is it is an untouchable thought. Guns for all. Heaven. You you. It, it is. It's like it's it's like going to the ACLU and saying, um, let's take away somebody's right to free speech, even if we don't like it. The NRA and the 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 the, the gun lobby. And the gun uh, proponents as a group would literally allow just this to happen on a daily basis. And what seems to happen in it, it's it literally sat. It makes me sad. You know, whenever we have these mass shootings, I try and make an effort to stay the fuck away from Facebook, because what saddens me is the number of people that I consider. That I'm socially um, connected with somehow will sit there and use a mass shooting as an opportunity to remind society that they have the right to bear arms. That you will not infringe on my ability to have guns. And there's no logical thought of, hey, listen, this is hurting the country. Maybe we can find some middle ground. And what it, what it always seems to come down to is this all or nothing argument right where, where the but gun that's rights the people are like we live well in. you can't you know it's not going to stop everybody from being killed so why do anything but i mean you know people you know people started to die because people were drinking and driving so we tightened up the dui laws 
People still die, but less than they used to. We implement seatbelt laws. People still die, but less than they used to. You know, we put controls on medicines and surgery and everything else. And uh, Neil deGrasse Even Tyson, alcohol. Neil deGrasse Tyson took some flack on Twitter because you know he he said, "Oh well, this this many people die because of botched surgeries in a day, and this many people die because of uh, improper medicines." But the the difference, and I think Trevor Noah pointed this out on the Daily Show, is you know you're talking about instances where we're trying to do good. Where right. if someone goes on that, that operating table, the doctor is legitimately trying to do good. If you're being prescribed a medication, the doctor is trying to do good. With these, people are clearly trying to do evil, and they are succeeding. When I think of a two-year-old baby lying in a hospital with broken bones because first their father gets killed protecting his wife and his two month old baby from the gunman. And then the mother dies after the father's already fallen to the ground, trying to protect the baby from gunshots. And she falls on top of him, breaking its bones. I don't know how you balance out something that you want for recreation with that. They don't care. I can't, but it, it, they it don't is, care. It is they difficult just... for me to think of a situation like that and justify, you know, trying to play devil's advocate, trying to understand the other side. I don't get it. Like, I don't, that I, part, I, 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 don't get. I would love to sit and talk to a, um, but you know what? You can't, you can't have any type of, um, of, of, of rational uh, uh, dialogue anymore. It literally becomes just, uh, um, it, it, it becomes a rush to the extreme and nobody actually wants, just, they don't seem to want to communicate. Rather, everybody wants to be able to have a platform so that they can rant their views. You know, like the number of times I've seen people, and I, Listen, I, I have the utmost respect for, for, for your social media game. Twitter depresses the fuck out of me lately. Oh, yeah. It, does, it, it does literally the same is. To me also. It is. You've got two groups, and they're very clearly on opposite sides, that are using Twitter as a platform to either A, pat themselves on the back by saying, these are my views, or pulling up a tweet from somebody that they disagree with and literally blasting them like there's 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 no it there, there's no attempt to find middle ground there's no attempt to find compromise there's no attempt to say hey we're all americans in this we all we you know we're all part of the same team it is these people are fucking evil and they all need to die and i'm fine with you know i'm fine with attempting to find a middle ground. I know a number of individuals that are responsible gun owners. I live next to a gentleman for, you know, for 15 plus years that had a number of guns, rifles, it's not the, whatever. It's not the congregation. It's not the people of the <laughs> it's congregation, not the congregation, is it? No. Okay, but, just making but sure. He lived at home. He had two young sons. I never worried about living next to him knowing that he had guns in the house because I knew he was a responsible gun owner and I knew he was teaching his kids how to be responsible gun owners and handlers as well. So yes, there can be a middle ground, but the fact There's, that we, we can't even have the conversation about no. how we get to the middle ground is what drives me insane. It's part of what drives what, me insane. What is the justification that a individual should be able to be in possession of a weapon that can let off a hundred bullets in a minute. What is the justification for it? Because who are you to take my rights away from me and tell me I can't? That's but the only I can argument you, I seem uh, to hold get. On. But I can tell you as a society that you cannot have mustard gas. Well, I got the Second Amendment, you know. I can tell you that you can't up. have sarin gas. Yeah. But keep in mind, the Second Amendment, when that was written... You you are literally dropping a an iron pebble <laughs> inside your rifle that you then had to fill up with gunpowder, push down and, and compact it before letting off a bullet. You you would be able to shoot maybe one shot every like minute and a half. 
No, it's it's a different world than when that was written, but no one wants to no one wants to address that as well. But, um, but no, but they're not clinging to the fact that you that, that um or maybe they are. I was going to say, but you know, like we've we we we've done constitutional amendments, and seventy you know, percent of that Americans bold want background checks. They want universal background checks. Oh, don't even get me started on the background check. Well, before we get to so that, we've before, got this, before we leave, we've got, the, uh, we're going to stay nope. on the mass shootings. All right, I go was ahead. going to talk about Donald Trump and the background checks. All right, I do want to. I do want to get to Trump and the background checks. I don't, before okay. we move away from the. I causes, trust you, Ron. I trust right, you. I'm, I'm roided up, so be careful. Um, all right. I want to talk about because everyone is, you know, not as much with the with the Dayton shooting, but with the El Paso shooting. You know, there, there's pretty much a straight line um, from. Trump's racist rants to what happened in El Paso. Uh, you know, the whole infestation thing, Trump pushed heavy on Twitter. And apparently this past week, uh, he had his social media team going through Twitter, deleting any reference he made towards infestation and invasions as far as it related to immigrants, uh, minorities, and Hispanics. So there's very clearly a correlation between the two. Um, there was in, in talking about the bigger question of racism and we talk about it with this week in racism we talk about it with this mass shooting there was i don't know if you saw the professor from princeton eddie gloud mm. that was on msnbc this week um it's a longer clip it's about three minutes long uh but then i, I definitely then i definitely didn't watch the whole <laughs> but thing but i feel he 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 hits on a lot of important things here because everyone wants to just point the finger at trump but he talks a lot about the overall issue that we're having and and continue to have in this country. I mean, you know, America's not unique in its sins hmm. as a country. We're not unique in our evils, to be honest with you. Um, I think where we where we may be singular is our fu a refusal to acknowledge them hmm. Hmm. and the legends and myths we tell about our inherent, you know, goodness. Uh, to hide and cover and conceal so that we can maintain a kind of willful ignorance that protects our innocence. See, the thing is that when we, the Tea Party was happening, we used people were, we were saying, pundits, oh, it's just about economic populism. <laughs> it's not about race. <clears throat> when people knew, people knew, social scientists were already writing that what was driving the Tea Party were anxieties about economic demographic anxiety. shifts, that the country was changing, that they were seeing these racially ambiguous babies on, on Cheerios commercials that the country wasn't quite feeling like it was a white nation anymore. And people were screaming from the top of their lungs, yo, this is not just simply economic populism. This is the un ugly underbelly of the country. See, the thing is, is this, and I'll say this, and I'll take the hit on it. There are communities that have had to bear the brunt of America confronting, white Americans confronting the danger of their innocence. And it happens every generation. So somehow we have to kind of, oh my God, is this who we are? And just again, another, here's another generation of babies. Think about it, that two-year-old had his bro bones broken by two parents trying to shield him from being killed. A woman who has been married to this man for as long as I've been on the planet almost, lost her, lost her husband. For what? And so. What we know is that the country has been playing politics for a long time on this hatred. We know this. So it's easy for us to place it all on Donald Trump's shoulders. It's easy for us to place Pittsburgh on his shoulders. It's easy for me to place Charlottesville on his shoulders. It's easy for us to place El Paso on his shoulders. This is us. And if we're going to get past this, we can't blame it on him. He's a manifestation of the ugliness that's in us. I've had the privilege of growing up in a tradition that didn't believe in the myths and the legends because we had to bear the brunt of them. Either we're going to change, Nicole, or we're going to do this again and again, and babies are going to have to grow up without mothers and fathers uncles and aunts, friends, while we're trying to convince white folk to finally leave behind a history that will maybe, maybe, or embrace a history that might set them free from being white. Finally. 
Can't argue that. What did you say was your promo code for uh, Tavor? <laughs> are you trying? Because I got up. Are you I got up to, to that screen. Down a bit. I got to the screen, but I need to know the promo code. Um, you know what? I've, well, let's we'll, what, what? We'll, let's deal with that after but after we're done with the podcast. The, the man brings up a lot of good points. Um, they also uh, managed to catch uh, Beto O'Rourke and ask him his thoughts. So this is a quick one, but I, I liked what Beto had to say. Just briefly, sir, can I just ask, is there anything in your mind that the president can do now to make this any better? Uh, what do you think? Um, you know the shit he's been saying. He's, he's been calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals. Um, I, I, I don't know, like, members of the press, what the fuck? Hold on a second. You know, I, 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 it's, it's, these, um, it's these questions that you know the answers to. I mean, connect the dots about what he's been doing in this country. Um, he's not tolerating racism. He's promoting racism. He's not tolerating violence. He's inciting racism and violence in this country. So, um, you know, I, I just... I, I don't know what kind of question that is. And I, I mean, I, I don't know that Beto is, is the presidential candidate, but I, I, I like the passion. I like the fact that he called out the journalists. Like that is a big issue where journalists feel that they have to report both sides of the story or, or just report everything as face value. And, and I read a comment from someone this week and I forget who it was, so I can't credit them appropriately. But they said, if you have one person that says it's sunny out and you have one person that says it's raining out, you don't report both. You open the window and you see what's exactly going on. And I think right. that's one of our big issues. Um, you know, the Times took a big hit. The New York Times took a big hit this week because Donald Trump read his uh, teleprompter rambling the other day. And their headline was Trump urges unity versus racism. You know, again, trying to normalize the fact that he tried to give this speech and called it Toledo when it was Dayton. Um, journalists need to do a better job. But, but I cut you off as we were going into background checks. I mentioned 70% of the country approve of universal background checks. And it seemed after the shootings in Dayton, in El Paso, that Trump was leaning towards trying to push background check legislation to a vote on the floor of the Senate. Do I hit yes, enter promo code? <laughs> or is it yes, enter referral code? Because I, I want to make sure that you get credit from Tavor but I don't want to. You, um, you would enter the the referral code. And what is the referral code so again? That referral code again is two six five. Two six five zero two zero. Zero two zero. Let me repeat two six five zero two zero. It's the redeem referral code. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's let me know if you get that. All right. I, um, I will let you know. Perfect. All right. Now, what were we talking about? I'm sorry. I turned, I, I zoned out a little you bit. You were thinking about beer. I understand. First off, okay. First off, Beto O'Rourke. Kudos for him for actually, whether, uh, hopefully it's genuine, but showing a little bit of fucking outrage because people are getting slaughtered in the streets. And it's, and, and, and it's, and keep in mind, it's not just these two mass shootings. People in this country are dying left and right in this country due to handguns. I mean, we had a uh, one of our our, our, our our loyal listeners point out the number of people that were shot to death in Chicago this past right. week, and nobody talks about it. And, and, and it's a valid comment, is just because somebody went on a shooting spree in El Paso and, and somebody else did in Dayton, there are there are gun deaths all across this country on a daily basis, and it's not happening in other countries. We have a gun problem in this country, and 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 we've normalized it. We just kind of accept it. Um, what I wanted to talk about was just the fact that um, you know, so so we've got these two mass shootings this past weekend. Everybody sits there and goes, "Will this be enough? Will this be the moment where?" You know, uh, you know, we, we finally do something. Everybody stands up and says, call to action, call to action. So finally, we've got this 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 numbskull in the fucking White House who literally, you know, in what outraged me as an American citizen sat there and said, well, you know what? Maybe maybe we're going to put in some some some, uh, you know, background checks that are going to be the tightest background checks. It's good. We're going to do something great. It's They're going to be, be the great. greatest background checks They're ever. Be the greatest back no, ever. Other, no, one said, no one else's country's background checks is going to be he better. He said that there was going to be an appetite for 
a uh, background checks now after these mass shootings. Keep in mind that it was his administration that stopped background checks um, being a, a requirement by the government. So now he's just basically reinstating what was already in place before he took over, but he's trying to take credit for that. And 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 today, the NRA actually warns Donald Trump that a bill that requires um, background checks would be, quote, unpopular amongst his supporters. That even just the idea of background checks has the fucking NRA already sitting there saying, oh, we don't support this. We're not even banning weapons. We're just saying, hey, maybe there's some people in this country that shouldn't be allowed to have fucking guns based on th on actions that they've taken. And let's and not forget can't... that Trump's administration also rolled back the rules that Obama put into place restricting access to guns for people with mental health issues. Why would some... Uh, uh, I, it, it literally drives me up the wall. I feel like we've talked about this enough and, and we should move on, but I'm not done yet. Um, one of the, you know, I, I know we all have our go-to sources for the media. We all, we all have, uh, you know, some people go to the New York Times. Some people go to Fox News. I myself like to go to the New York Post. I'm a Drudge Report guy, personally. You know, I used to be a Drudge Report. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I stopped checking it for a while. He went too far I don't to the remember left for why. me. He went to the left? For me. I thought he was very right with Not right enough. Really? Okay. Um, but today, in uh, excuse me, yesterday in the New York Post, uh, columnist Miranda Devine, or as I like to call her, Miranda Devine, because I think we all know really what's going on here. She puts up an opinion piece called, and this is the headline, the link between pot and mass shootings may be closer than we think. So right off the bat, she's not, she's not dropping facts in the headline. The headline, it says that the link may, may be closer than we think. Possibly. So so, so, so now I'm, I'm expecting to be hit with a barrage of factoids. And I'm just going to do, I'm just going to nitpick and, and, and pull up a couple. So she starts off with, as evidence mounts of the health problems associated with marijuana, New York has insisted on joining other greedy states scrambling to legalize this deceptively dangerous drug. Blah, 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 da, blah, blah, blah. And in all honesty, we cannot rule out a connection between increasing marijuana use, mental illness, and the recent spate of mass shootings by disturbed young males. We don't know yet how much the mental state or drug use of the El Paso or Dayton killers have to do with the killings. But a former girlfriend of the Dayton killer has indicated he was mentally ill, and two of his friends interviewed by reporters this week mentioned his previous drug use. Ooh. So what they're saying is that, heaven forbid, if somebody had possibly smoked pot in their life, they're going to go on a mass shooting. What she's not including is the fact that it's more likely that somebody who smoked pot is going to order Domino's. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I haven't it's smoked a lot of weed that in this my life, what... but I remember when I would smoke pot, I really didn't want to go anywhere. I just really no. wanted to hang out, have a beer, and maybe get a meat lover pizza. Oh, the meat What's lover wrong pizza with the freaking Domino's a... meat lover pizza? Or was it Pizza Hut? I, I don't remember. We'd have to ask Matt Bollerman what's wrong with the meat lover pizza, <laughs> because apparently he, back in the day, me, 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 me. he had a problem with it. Me, 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 me. So, yeah, me, I, I mean, I'm thumbing through this. This might be one of the worst pieces of literature of uh, journalism I've ever read. So just horrible. Anyway, right. well, again, well, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure we'll have to talk about more mass shootings in this country before right. anything else, uh, anything else gets changed. Um, moving on to what is actually probably a lighter topic at this point is all the celebrity deaths we had in the past week. It was a rough, we really did. rough week for celebrities. Brian, who did we lose this week? And are we grading these well, deaths? We, we, we most definitely are. Right. It's, funny, it's funny you ask that because um, uh, as uh, someone who checks the comments that are coming in on our website... Um, Grading celebrity deaths seems to be a very popular uh, bit that we've introduced. Um, you know, it, uh, it, it people are really responding to it. First death, D.A. Pennebacher, 
legendary rock documentarian Dead at 94, filmmaker behind The War Room, Monterey Pop, and Bob Dylan's Don't Look Back, um, the uh, one of the masters of cinema verite style, um, passed away at 94 of natural causes. Ron, how do you rate his death? I mean, I, I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't really uh, know who this was until you sent me the article. I'm giving uh, DA a D plus. I couldn't agree with you more. I didn't even know he was ever alive, let alone shocked that he was dead. Um, then we we go up we go up north. We hit the great state of Massachusetts, heading over to Cape Cod, where the granddaughter of uh, one of uh, uh, the nation's, how do we call it, celebrities. America's royalty, uh, really. America's royal family, yes. the Kennedys. Yes, the you know it, this one really hurt. Swarza Kennedy Hill, uh, dead at 22 um, in what is believed to be a drug overdose that has been linked to her previously openly discussed uh, depression. Found dead at the family compound, the granddaughter of Robert Kennedy. I'll pronounce her name again just so I can butcher it one more time. Swarza. 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 Uh, you, you might have gotten it right. I'm not sure. Well, dead in Hyannisport. Ron, what do you think? Uh, I'm actually going to I'm gonna give this an incomplete because I don't know too much about her. And this is, is somewhat tragic when someone dies at 22. Uh, wasted, uh, a wasted life. I believe she probably could have done some great things. Uh, I give her a D minus mm. because I don't know who she uh, is. That's, that's tough. All right. Then we hit uh, this one. And this one was it was came in right under the wire. Um, something that, uh, you know, uh, I know you're an active runner. You've talked about uh, how active you are in the uh, in the the scene, I guess you could call it. But the famed uh, Boston marathoner Rosie Ruiz passed away this past oh. week at the age of 66 i loved her that... in white man can't jump well like her uh, she, was... she was uh woody harrelson's girlfriend i believe yes she was Small teeth. but she she first came to mookie, mookie. remember when she, in uh in uh, uh do the right thing mookie yeah. um rosie ruiz who was uh, uh, uh caught the nation's attention in 1980 when she won the women's uh, uh portion of the boston marathon um, unfortunately, she raised a couple question marks when it appeared she was not sweating as she crossed the finish line despite having run 26.2 miles. But the giveaway was the fact that there were absolutely no uh, 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 video, uh, visual or uh, video uh, uh, mementos of, uh, of her actually running the race. Um, later it came out, somebody saw her on the train as she got off at the stop nearest to the uh, finish line. Yes, so, uh, I mean, you can cheat in running, but you can't cheat death. So uh, she passed away uh, from cancer on July 8th. Uh, had changed her name, actually, to Rosie Vivas. So clearly did not want the connotations. Uh, but yeah, she was, that was, that was even before there was social media back in, in 1980, everyone found out yeah. about Rosie Ruiz. Because you don't, right. you don't cheat in a marathon, my friend. No, no, you do not. Um, you absolutely do not. What do you give her? I am going to give this one a B plus because oh. I think she was one of this country's first viral uh, viral hits before that was even a thing. Like I said, everybody uh. knew about her. Um, they even still, you know, use her as a term if people cheat while they're running. It's referred to as pulling a rosy. And there is actually right. a bar about a mile from the finish line of the Boston Marathon that puts out a sign saying Rosie Ruiz started here. So there's still definitely some relevance for her, um, even in this uh, even in this day and time. All right. I'm going to give her a uh, C minus. All right. And then uh, what was our last one? I think we had a the big one, the big one, the big yes. one. This is and I'm not trying to tell you how to grade, but uh, uh, famed American poet. Uh, famed author Toni Morrison, um, who is a Nobel laureate in literature, best-selling work explored black identity in America, in particular the crushing experience 
of being a black woman in America, passed away in uh, this past Monday in the Bronx at the age of 88. You know, she uh, she first came to, uh, uh, you know, hit everybody's radar with her work, The Song of Solomon, which received the National Book Critics Circle Award in 1977. She won a Pulitzer Prize in 1988 with Beloved, uh, won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1993. I liked Beloved. That was the way I pronounced (laughs) it. Okay. Um, we, you know, you know, I, I think uh, most white women in America now know her uh, thanks to her multiple appearances on Oprah Winfrey um, and her work being featured on Oprah's uh, television book club. Uh, she uh, she opened a lot of uh, a lot of eyes to the experience of uh, of what it was like being a black woman, and uh, she, the only eyes she's opening now are the uh, people who are uh, exp- exploring her work after she's passed. There you go. So I, you know, I mean, what can you say? You've kind of said it somewhat already. Pulitzer Prize winner, Nobel Prize winner, recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Um, someone, you, you can't, there's, there's two people that you can point to that were truly like a game changer in their industry. And she was right. one of those people, um, a legend. Maybe it's an English major in me, uh, but I'm giving her an A. I was going to go A minus. All right. We're in the same ballpark there. So that's uh, that's our deaths that we're rating this week. And we'll see I'm... who we lose moving forward. Is there a last minute death that snuck in here? No, not at all. But I did want to um, mention we have a listener comment that we received on the website, right. which I uh, which is directed at you. Oh, okay. All right, listener Billy P. uh, uh, said, uh, Having just heard Ron discuss his experience at the Weird Al show, I can assure him that the Blue Meanie is one of the nicest people he would ever encounter. Both he and his girlfriend are friends of mine, and Meanie loves talking to fans. Oh, I I will not argue that. I mean, you can tell from looking at uh, at him on Facebook and, and Twitter, his social media presence, his videos, uh, there's no question in my mind about that. That again, just again, speaks more to me and my mental hangups. To me, to me, with my mental hangups and my inability to approach people in general, much less famous people. Got it. So hopefully, one of these days. I, however, well, you know, next time you're down, we're gonna go search for the blue meanie. Okay. Ron and Brian, search for the blue meanie. That'll be a that'll Let's be a do. thing. Who? Remind me, who was the celebrity that you did harass? Uh, was it Dave that Winfield? was Dave Winfield. Yeah. God, I, I love that picture. Go to our Instagram. I, I don't know if you put it on Facebook. I know, uh, but it's such a classic photo of you and Dave Winfield. Yeah, he uh, the the look of disinterest in his face and wanting that interaction to be open to be over was uh, was classic. Amazing. <laughs> what um, else do we else got? Do this we, week? Got? we got uh, oh the the Castro guy, Joaquin. Joaquin Castro, not Julian Castro, not the presidential candidate, but his twin brother. Oh, wait a second. So he's not the guy running for for president? (laughs) He is not. Julian is running for president. Joaquin is his twin brother, who is the one that posted um, all of the the Trump donors on his website the other day. Oh, so this story is not as impressive as I thought it was. Because I thought I saw the picture, I was like, "That's the dude that I saw in the debate." They are twins, yes. But he's not the guy running. Not the guy running. His brother. He is also uh, in, in political office somehow as well. Well, I'm not that. I'm not that fascinated by the story right so, now. So you don't want to talk about it anymore? Not really. I mean, um, I thought that it was. I thought the story here is that a guy that's running for president has went on Twitter and posted the names and employers of constituents in his district in Congress in San Antonio who have donated the maximum allowed by the uh, Federal Election Committee um, to Donald Trump, names and and whatnot, and how it has triggered um, the right to say that this was some type of line that he has crossed that that is unescapable and um, and I, I think it was a genius move. I mean, even Ted Cruz, who we know killed um, John Kennedy, 
he t suddenly this brings him this brings Ted Cruz to try to you know be the the uh, to calm things down when he tweeted earlier this week everyone needs to tone down the hateful partisan rhetoric way down this is wrong and Castro should retract it in our constitutional republic the people rightfully hold their representatives accountable elected representatives should not be vilifying and doxing their own constituents well, I, won't say a word about donald trump and what he has said as the president of this country but some uh the brother of a, of a of of uh, of somebody who's running for president this gets ted cruz all riled up feeling like a line in the sand has been drawn well and, and two things the information that he posted was already public information it was something it's that anybody could have pulled off of the FEC website, um, right? And then second, you know, the 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 people like to grab certain words and run with them, and everyone kept going with this whole doxing theme, and that's not what doxing is. Like doxing is when you give personal information, addresses, phone numbers, things of that nature, and he just listed businesses and things like that um, that that had donated to the Trump campaign, you know. While, I, while, it's, while it's tough to, to defend people that donate to the Trump campaign, I, I can tell you, and we had this conversation earlier, that if you are a business owner and you are in an area that is heavily Republican or heavily Democratic, you get hit up by your local political party for donations from the president down to local, uh, local races. And you, as a business owner, want to stay on the good side of whatever party is running your town because you're going to need help one day with an inspection or a variance or whatever so i think what is i think what is what is dangerous here is that just because a business may be donating money towards a political party doesn't 100 percent mean that they support that party they just may need to be doing it because it's it's a way to support their business. Okay, that's all I got. All right, all right listen, I, 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 you've shed some light on the subject in a in a manner which has has made me be a little bit open minded, and I think there's some validity there. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on Trump, but we do have two other Trump related. Uh, stories here going out to Montana. There was a man who is accused of fracturing a teen skull because the boy didn't remove his hat during the national anthem. I believe the boy was, what, 13 years old? And the mm -hmm. guy basically uh, picked him up and threw him down to the ground and broke his skull. So he's been arrested, yep. obviously, and he, uh, he's been charged uh, with assault. Uh, he is uh, his attorney, though, is stating that he the his client truly feels that he had Donald Trump's uh, permission to do this. So we also should probably add in there that the 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 accused Kurt James Brockway was honorably discharged from the military after sustaining a traumatic brain injury. So Ooh. clearly you've got a guy that isn't dealing with all of his wits. Um, and and he he states that, you know, based on, uh, you know, some of the president's talk since the kid was disrespecting the national anthem, in his mind, he was disrespecting the country. And therefore, it was fine for him to lash out at the kid like that. And physically attack him. I think regardless of whether it's a brain injury or not, he needs to be put somewhere, whether it's jail, right. whether it's a mental hospital. Uh, clearly, it's a very dangerous individual. Uh, to be walking around at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then what was the last one? Oh, and this uh, this one just popped up today. Do you remember uh, Rod Blagojevich? Blagojevich, Blagovic. yes. F uh, former governor of Illinois. Former governor of Illinois. Former and contestant star of, on The Celebrity Apprentice. Of, you read my, you, you, great minds. Uh, you knew where I was going with that. So when, uh, when Barack Obama won the presidency, that, of course, opened up his Senate seat, uh, which it was up to Governor Blagojevich to fill. And he was caught on tape uh, requesting bribes to fill the position. So he was sentenced back, uh, well, it was about, uh, about seven years ago, because that's how long he has... He's uh, served of his 14-year sentence. He's seven years in. Apparently, Donald Trump is now 
uh, contemplating um, pardoning him and letting him out. Thoughts on this? Not outraged. I think I think seven years for this is um, uh, for for corruption like this. Uh, I think it's a, a reasonable uh, uh, sentence. Uh, real quick, I'm seeing that the. Bl- I mean, it's not it's not a violent crime. Right. You know, I uh, you know he didn't uh, kill someone. Um, you know, he didn't uh, separate families and put children in cages. Um, <laughs> he simply basically said, "Listen, I've got this." Um, great opportunity, and how can I figure out a way to make uh, uh, my situation uh, improve as a result of it? Um, the fact that he's actually done seven years, I think, is incredible. Um, I, I, it, worse things could happen. Right. And, and Trump tweeted out about an hour ago that he's having White House counsel look into it, so I'm sure we'll hear more of this in the coming days. Just real quick, if you can get down here, Brian, uh, the Blue Meanie apparently is attending the Smashing Pumpkins concert in Camden, New Jersey tonight, so maybe we can track him down there. Does he? Is this the guy that posts the ticket of where he's sitting? He, he didn't post it tonight, but I can kind of tell where he's sitting based on uh, his photo. I'm a pretty good ha- stalker at times. Uh, apparently so. Um, now I feel a little uncomfortable. And one last story, just because it's one of my favorite stories of the week uh, from uh, the New York Daily News. Uh, it, we're going out to Kentucky uh you know and you know if it's if it's a state that uh, continues to elect mitch mcconnell you know that there are just some really great individuals there one of them being katherine ollers uh who apparently uh she was arrested uh for uh driving while intoxicated or excuse me not while in to- uh, while operating a vehicle but they were intoxicated and about to operate a vehicle um so they uh, they took her in. They had a child whose car street was not properly strapped in the back of the car and was, quote, saturated with urine. Um, so she was mm. deemed to be a danger of, to herself and others, took her into custody, cuffed her behind her back um, and put her in the in the cruiser. So I'm, I'm just going to read you the quote from the police officer that arrested her, quote, while in the back seat of my cruiser, Ollers pulled a clear plastic baggie from her vagina cavity, dumped some white substance Ew. on the seat, and began to inhale it through her nose. Yeah. According to the citation, what I love is they then add, it's not clear exactly how that was done. This is journalism. You got to find the fuck out how that happened. How, if you're handcuffed behind your back, do you manage to pull something out of your vagina? Uh, I would say that the cops didn't do a very thorough check of her. And the citation lists the substance as, quote, cocaine other. Mm. I think that would be, uh, that, that would be safe well, I think to it was, say. It, I think it was cocaine mixed with some pubes. <laughs> so she is accused of drug possession, evidence tampering. Well, if you start drugs that are hidden in your vagina, I guess that's tampering. Technically, yes. Uh, endangering yes. the welfare of a minor and public intoxication. All right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Can I take this opportunity to wish her good luck? Godspeed. Um, we wish you the best, Catherine. Get yourself some help. And while we are wishing Catherine good luck, there's another uh, group of people that we want to wish good luck to. Who's that, Brian? This coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, August 11th, at 8 p.m. on ESPN2. We will have the 32nd annual Arena Bowl. Oh, nice. Are the I know the Philadelphia Soul made the playoffs. Did they make it to the I championship you, game? I will give you one guess who the Philadelphia Soul are playing in Arena Bowl 32. Are they playing the Albany Empire? Albany wow. Empire in Albany. A rematch East. of the game that you and I saw here in Philadelphia. And I will be watching it Sunday night on ESPN2. I expect you to. Maybe we will live tweet it. Possibly. So I know they split the season series. Albany won the home game. Philadelphia won the home game. Now it's the rubber match for all the marbles. Now for anybody in the Capital District area in upstate New York, there are tickets still available. Shocking. Top price ticket available? I'm going to let you take a guess, Ron. Top price ticket available? I'm going to go $75. 
$33. Wow, that is a bargain. Now that's that is in the 100, so you're you're in the lower tier, right. but you are not at the 50-yard line. I would say you're probably at the 20 to 15-yard line. All right. You know what? Well, you know, I might not be able to catch the game on Sunday because on Sunday, I will be at City Tap House in University City seeing a night of comedy on the patio headlined by Ron and Brian superfan Dave Hill. So I am looking forward to that. So anybody that's in the University City area, um, it's like $10 admission. You get a food and drink voucher. The weather looks to be beautiful on Sunday. Um, there's a local opener, uh, another comedian on the bill, and then Dave, Ly- Dave Hill will be headlining. So Dave Hill, always entertaining, uh, big fan of ours. We're big fans of his. Come out with uh, with Ron and entertain and enjoy yourself. Now, here's a question. Will you be bringing him a gift package? I mean, I think it would only make sense to uh, maybe a swag bag, if you will, um, of mm-hmm. some of uh, our best stuff. The, the hat, the, the baseball cap, the shot glass, the stickers, the magnets. Um, he can get that for free. Folks out there, you can't get it for free, but you can get it for some very reasonable prices on patreon.com slash the Ron and Brian podcast. Many different Absolutely. sponsorship levels and free content. Brian, what's some of the free content we have available to people right now? Well, the free content right now that's available, we'll start off with, is the live podcast that you and I recorded at the 7th Annual Philadelphia Podcast Festival. Mm-hmm. We did a uh, hour show, you and I, in front of a live audience. Um, we had a live drink of the week, live um, uh, uh, song parodies. Uh, we had listener questions. I mean, it, w- it was one of our best episodes, in my opinion. Um, and that is available to, at all tiers. Um, coming out this week. What? We have new exclusive our, content coming up on the Patreon? New exclusive content. Brian reads Chuck Tingle's um, Sentient Jet Ski Lesbian Extravaganza nice. by Chuck Tingle. Um, I've, I, I read the entire book. It's about a, a 30 minutes. Uh, it's it, it literally it, it turned me on while reading it. We're going to put that up on the Patreon uh, for our subscribers. So don't be cheap. Go to Patreon. Uh, the money that you are uh, contributing helps us get better audio equipment. It helps us put together better content. And ultimately, it will pave the way for me to quit my day job. Many people feel like we're just going to spend this money on beer and whiskey. All this money well, goes right back into the podcast in some way, shape, or form. And just so that you know that we are not... Um, Putting it all into into beer is the fact that I'm going to be using the Tavor app on my phone using Ron's referral code so that I can save ten dollars. And well, no, do you save ten dollars? I get ten dollars. Um, so definitely, you know, keep on top of that. Um, what was that? Uh, what was that number again? I know. Why are you asking? I know you don't remember. It's two six five. Oh, it's zero two zero. Tavor. It is a good deal. You can get. uh, Yeah, I don't like the uh, name of it. You don't like it? No, I like when the name has the name. I like when the name has tells you exactly what it is. Okay. Like I like podcast names where they have the name podcast in the name. Well, I mean, obviously. So when you're when you when it says the Ron and Brian podcast, you know. That it's the podcast with Ron and Brian. Tavor literally could be a website that helps me um, book hotels. What if it's what if it's Tabor? Like it's supposed to be like Saver, like you save or something. Then what's the T for? I have no idea. Well, if our good friends at Tabor or Tavor would like to reach out to Ron and Brian and explain the name, uh, we'd be more than happy to give you some promotion for let's say a twenty five dollar <laughs> credit each. I would say that we've already given them quite a bit of uh, promotion this week. Well, we'll we'll see how many people redeem that so I can Let's get that do it. sweet, sweet cash. All right. Anything else this week, my friend? I think uh, we've done some good work here. It's a, it's a long episode. We've, we're we're clocking in almost at an hour and a half. But um, We had everything I wanted this, to. Should I do what, an audio book of the, um, of the Inconvenient Truth by the uh, Walmart shooter? 
Uh, let's let's maybe give it a little I'm gonna, time. I'm going to say no on let's that maybe one. Maybe give it a little time. But uh, this is what steroids do. It allows you to crank through an hour and a half. So I'll be on steroids for the next 14 days, my friends. Hop on and enjoy the ride. What's the lesson here, Ron? What lesson did we learn? Drugs are good, kids. Don't garden. Oh, well, that too. Uh, hire people. Hire somebody, hire, hire somebody to garden for when you. When you are allergic to plant life, specifically poison ivy, yeah. uh, hire people. It's, it's worth it. And I'm sure... I'm sure that there is one of your neighbors that would love to spend one of their weekdays, um, you know, uh, in the heat, uh, uh, planting and digging and, and mulching and whatnot. Um, I'm sure that there is a, uh, a an American citizen that wants to spend their day there um, uh, earning uh, less than minimum wage. I will look into that. I mean... I- you know, and my upbeat attitude really does not convey the absolute agony I'm in because I, I really want to itch all of this poison ivy. You've done a great job. You've done a great job not but itching. But it, you can't do that because that's just how it spreads. And I don't want to end up with it on my junk. Period. End of story. Mm. That's a bad way to end your day. If you get it on your junk, will you post a photo? Uh, uh, for our Patreon, I would, yes. Okay. <laughs> Well done. Got to have well some played. here. All right, sir, let's roll on out. Anything else for the cause this week? Nope. All right. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Rate, review, subscribe, share us around. Most importantly, love each other. Love each other.